People report unlawful conduct at work. It happens all the time. Uh, and people refuse to do illegal things to other people because they know it's wrong. These people are whistleblowers. Uh, they're in a, a unique circumstance and context where um, it's not just discrimination. These people are hated. And these people are targeted. And it's not good enough that they're just fired. They have to be disgraced, discredited, and basically, basically unhirable. And uh, when people find themselves in the position of having been terminated because they blew the whistle or refused to do something illegal, they need a lot of help because uh, the law is complicated. And from the time they're fired to the time that uh, they're getting their relief, there are many, many things that those folks need to know in order to make it through to the end. Generally speaking, what is a whistleblower under the law? Well, I mean, a whistleblower is somebody who reports illegal activity at work or, and this is the important one, people don't always realize this, it's somebody who refuses to do something that they know is actually illegal. If they're wrong about it, then that's a problem. But um, if you refuse to do something that you know is illegal, like stealing from a customer or uh, pouring uh, chemicals outside where they're not supposed to be poured, uh, those, those acts are against the law, and we know it. If they refuse to do it, they're a whistleblower as well, even if they never reported it. So the whistleblower laws don't cover every complaint or every refusal. It's specific ones, correct? You're a whistleblower when the thing you're reporting or the act you're refusing to do is prohibited by law. So um, if it's just that you don't want to work with somebody that's not going to be whistleblowing because that's, that's just talking in the workplace. But if you report, for instance, that your uh, automotive shop is putting oil into the lawn outside because they don't want to dispose of it properly, well, then that's whistleblowing. So what are the main or the most common whistleblower laws that you encounter as a California lawyer? Well, in California, we're really lucky because we have an umbrella law that's called Labor Code Section 1102.5. And this umbrella law says essentially that if you're reporting any kind of illegal act or refusing to engage in any kind of illegal act, well then that is illegal unto itself. And so that provides the statutory framework for a whistleblowing case. Can you give us an example of a case that you handled under 1102.5, some details and the result? So um, imagine that your community is being hit with one of the biggest rain wind storms, a hundred year storm. And imagine if your job is to drive a truck full of petroleum fuel. And then imagine that your boss calls you after you've already started drinking at your home and demands that you get back in that truck and you drive over down power lines past other big rigs that are on their side because this company doesn't want to miss the money that they could make delivering combustible fuel in a hundred year storm. That's what happened in one of our cases. And uh, when our truck driver came in the next day and told the boss that he, there was no way he was going to drive, he was fired on the spot. After we did our discovery and we took the deposition, including the president of this company, uh, tapping his cane on the ground saying it's his company and he's going to run it the way he wants to. When the jury saw that video, it didn't take them more than an hour to hit this company with very high seven-figure verdict, which ultimately was resolved afterwards for a very successful amount on behalf of this client. What does somebody working in the medical field need to know about uh, whistleblowing? Medical workers, somehow, somehow they don't all realize how much protection there is for medical whistleblowers because anything that's going to affect patient safety is going to be a topic for medical whistleblowing. 
right? So it, let's just say um, that, that normally there can be some concerns if it's a report versus a formal complaint, for instance. But for a medical whistleblower, all they have to do is report. It doesn't have to be in writing. It doesn't have to contain any special words. They just need to report that there is a concern about either hospital conditions, which is a very broad term, or patient safety. Those are the two areas, hospital conditions, patient safety. And remember that this involves both physical safety and psychological safety. So for instance, let's say you have a nurse who's in a procedure, but the doctor is yelling and shouting, uh, and it's just becoming a distraction and it's creating anxiety and stress to the point where the person feels like they cannot work in this environment. It's become that toxic. Reporting that circumstance is protected by law. So uh, generally speaking, when we are contacted by medical whistleblowers who are seeking advice about what to do, we're always telling them, make sure that you have reported your concerns and do it in a way that leaves a trail, that leaves some, some way that you can prove that you made the report. Uh, put it in an email, put it in a letter, keep the copy. Uh, make the report in front of people who you can rely on to be witnesses into the future. Uh, don't make the mistake of just having a one-on-one -on -one where you can't prove that you complained because after you make that complaint, you may very well find yourself out of a job. Could you give us an example of a medical whistleblower case that you handled? Um, my office has handled many medical whistleblowing cases and, um, you know, I, I would say they're all extremely important and memorable, but certainly uh, one of the uh, major cases that my office did was on behalf of a physician's assistant uh, who was reporting illegal conduct happening during open heart procedures. Uh, and then she was uh, promptly removed from her position under completely bogus pretenses where they made up uh, accusations that really didn't have to do with her quality of care, but more just attacking her in terms of her personality and who she was. And uh, we took that to uh, a verdict in a federal court and uh, news of that verdict was heard around the world. Another common whistleblower statute that we hear about is Labor Code Section 6310. Can you please give us a brief overview of what this law says? It's easy for me to explain Labor Code 6310 because it's just one of the most fundamental concepts. Uh, you have to have a safe place to work. Uh, and if you report unsafe working conditions, a slippery floor in a restaurant, a broken piece of machinery in a factory, whatever it is, if you make that report of an unsafe working condition and then something bad happens to you afterwards, like a termination or a suspension or a reduction in pay, um, the law is going to look at that and assume that the reason the bad thing happened is because of your protected report about safety. So uh, 6310 is very simple and unfortunately often violated premise, which is you can't retaliate against people because they complain or report that the workplace is unsafe. Could you give us an example of a labor code 6310 case that you handled and the results? Sure. Uh, one of our cases, and, and again, this highlights the difference between making a report about concerns of physical safety versus psychological safety, um, but we were very fortunate to represent somebody who worked for the California Department of Corrections, and she worked in the dental program, and ironically, this situation didn't actually have to do with any of the inmates. She had a, uh, a co-worker who was a subordinate, meaning she supervised this person, and she had to give him a bad performance evaluation because he wasn't doing his job. And then he went around the workplace saying that he was going to get a gun and shoot her. Uh, and so uh, this is happening at a correctional institution. Our client reported that she did not feel psychologically safe working with somebody who had uh, made a threat of gun violence in the workplace. And ironically, uh, the department didn't do anything to uh, step in between her and the person who had threatened to kill her. Uh, and ultimately, she went off of work due to stress. And uh, although she kept her job, um, it was a long time before she returned back to work. And we had to try to a jury to explain that 
uh, that the prison wasn't willing to accommodate her and to prevent and ensure uh, that there would be no incident. Um, instead, they, they essentially were asking her to leave the workplace instead of disciplining this person. Uh, ultimately, when the jury heard about how, how the Department of Corrections failed to ensure the psychological safety and physical safety of our client, they provided her seven-figure compensation, uh, including wage loss, but mainly emotional distress, having been put through this ordeal. What about in situations where there's discrimination or harassment and somebody complains about it, does that count as blowing the whistle? Anytime you report illegal conduct and something bad happens to you, that's retaliation and you can sue for that retaliation occurring. Usually, they're, they're not usually, every time something bad has to happen to you, whether you lost your shift, you lost your job, you got a suspension. But what really makes it unique and what we're talking about here is really fair employment retaliation. So retaliation because you complained about something that is illegal under our California Fair Employment Act, right? So mistreatment of person based on their religion, mistreatment of a person based on their gender, or mistreatment of a person because they've complained about that. Um, if you're mistreating somebody because they complained about somebody being retaliated, that also would be retaliation. So you've got retaliation inside of more retaliation. Bottom line is if you're subjecting somebody to a bad thing at work, something truly bad that's hurting them, either financially or emotionally, then that's retaliation and a lawyer can assist you in dealing with that and uh, making sure that justice is delivered. Does it have to be the discrimination or harassment that the person is personally experiencing or can they complain about somebody else who's being a victim and still be protected under this law? A fundamental aspect of our fair employment laws is protection of people who speak up for others or who are associated with others. So you can't terminate somebody because they told you to stop discriminating against your black employees. If that happens, that person is as protected as the black employees who may be discriminated against in that example. Um, without giving us any names or you know, confidential information, can you give us an example of a case that you handle of whistleblowing because of uh, complaining about harassment or discrimination? Absolutely. Um, one of our uh, record-setting verdicts happened in San Diego for an absolutely delightful store manager uh, who worked in the automotive industry. And this brave soul, she got pregnant and she had to deal with a boss who was just a jerk. And she complained about that a lot, that this person was being a jerk. She, in fact, went to uh, the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing to file a charge of discrimination while she was still working. And then uh, the retaliation happened. And in this case, the retaliation was somebody claimed that money was lost from one of her stores and they blamed her for it and they fired her as though she had stolen it herself. Well, a jury did not agree and they awarded her an absolutely massive amount of compensation and punitive damages. If somebody successfully proves to a jury that they were terminated in violation of one of these whistleblower laws, what does the law allow them to recover? You ever see one of those money trucks on the road? Uh, you prove one of these cases, you can well expect one of those to be delivering a massive amount of money. Because if you fire an employee, right? If you fire an employee because that employee is trying to prevent your business from doing something illegal, you should expect to pay and pay big. You're gonna be responsible for the emotional distress damages. You're gonna be responsible for the wage loss and the benefits. You're gonna get hit with punitive damages that's going to make you feel it. It's a big, big financial liability when an employee is terminated illegally from the job that they've been performing well and just trying to help this employer uh, work its business. So, um, so if you're a whistleblower, right? The company is going to invest 
a lot to discredit you, to ruin you. And you, more than anybody else, need competent legal representation. It's so important that you hook up with an attorney that you can trust and that you know has the experience you need to navigate those shark-infested waters.